Hello everyone, I am Sir David. Welcome back to my channel and welcome to another video lesson. In this video, I am going to present the topic on genres of poetry. Let's start with the first genre. The first genre is the so-called narrative poetry. So what is a narrative poetry? Narrative poetry is one of the most common poetry genres. This is a type of poetry that tells stories and tales through verses known as narrative. Narrative poetry is very much similar to a novel or a short story and has a plot, character, and a setting. Narrative poetry depicts a series of events, including action and dialogue, using a number of poetic methods such as rhyme, meter, and rhyme scheme. Usually, a narrative poem has a single speaker who is known as the narrator. A narrator is a person who relates to the entire story from beginning to the end. We have here an example of a narrative poetry. So, our example is a poem entitled The Raven by Edgar Allan Poe. This poem presents a grieving man's mysterious confrontation with a raven and his descent into despair. The grieving man is the narrator of this poem. The second genre is the epic poetry. A lengthy narrative poem is what is known as an epic. An epic highlights the intricate details, features, and journey of its characters from a remote past. These long poems typically detail extraordinary feats and adventures of characters from a distant past. For examples, the Iliad and the Odyssey by Homer are great examples of epic. Both give a detailed description of the journey or the events of the Trojan War and about the life of Odysseus. Odysseus or Ulysses was a great king who enjoyed traveling. The poem talks about his journey after the Trojan War. Another example is the Mahabharata. Mahabharata is also an excellent example of an epic. It was composed in Sanskrit and is a beautifully written poem. To be precise, one of the longest poems. Let's proceed to the next genre, the dramatic poetry. Dramatic poetry is poetry that tells a story to its readers and usually has a narrator. The most popular kind of dramatic poetry is a dramatic monologue. A dramatic monologue is also known as a persona poem. A dramatic monologue is a long speech written from the first person point of view. The narrator is the only speaker and is addressing an unknown audience or character and it appears like we are overhearing the conversation. Example, My Last Duchess by Robert Browning is a beautifully dark poem. While reading a poem like this, it feels like you are unfolding a secret or a story which makes it even more exciting and intriguing. In My Last Duchess, the Duke is describing the portrait of his last Duchess, his late wife, and the journey with the Duchess. The unique style of this kind of poem allows the readers to ponder their thoughts and understanding. Next genre is the satirical poetry. The term satire is defined as a work of literature used to highlight human vices and follies, stupidity to ridicule. A satire in poetry is either aimed at social dysfunction or obnoxious individuals or both. The satirical poem makes fun of someone's vice, absurdities, foolishness, injustice, abuses, shortcomings, or moral failing. Sometimes, this kind of poem is written to inspire or warn the readers. The satirical poem is a mockery for the readers to either laugh at or to learn something from. Example of satirical poetry the Canterbury Tales is a collection of stories by Geoffrey Chaucer that was first published in 1400. Next, we have the Lyric Poetry. 
A lyric poem is short and highly musical in tone. A lyric poem is capable of conveying strong, intense emotions, feelings to the readers. The lyric poets make use of various rhymes, literary devices, and meter to give that song-like touch. A lyric poem is short and doesn't necessarily tell a detailed story or journey. A lyric poem is actually like a personal expression of emotions and feelings by a single speaker. So example, we have here, The World is Too Much With Us by William Wordsworth. A very interesting example is William Wordsworth's The World is Too Much With Us. It is a sonnet by the English romantic poet William Wordsworth. In it, Wordsworth criticizes the world of first industrial revolution for being absorbed in materialism and distancing itself from nature. Next genre is the elegy poetry. The elegy is one of the poetry genres that resonates with death or loss. The elegy usually comprises themes of grief, sadness, loss, redemption, compassion, and reflection. Traditionally, an elegy is versed in couplets. Point to be noted, many earlier elegies follow no set rules and have no set form or style. Hence, there was extensive liberty towards the rhyme scheme and meter. Example, we have the elegy written in a country churchyard. The poem is an elegy expressing the emotion after the death of the poet Richard West in 1742. Now we have the verse. There are two types of verse poems. One is free verse poems and the other one is the blank verse poems. Though they might appear to be similar in names, they are quite different. Free verse poetry is free of rules and regulations. As a result, it lacks a consistent rhyme scheme, meter, or musical structure. While blank verse poetry follows a much stricter structure with precise meter, commonly iambic pentameter. The blank verse follows no rhyme scheme. Poetry written in blank verse is preferred more than poetry written in free verse. Poets like Shakespeare and Milton favored blank verse style. Example, we have Shakespeare's Sonnet 130. This is an example of blank verse. Another example is Walt Whitman's Leaves of Grass, which is an example of free verse. Let's proceed to the next genre, which is the fable. Fable is another one of the common poetry genres, a poetic story written in verse or prose with a moral or didactic at the end is known as a fable. A fable traditionally makes use of animals instead of humans as characters or leads to illustrate and explain a valuable lesson. Example, we have here A Grain of Salt by Audrey Heller. Next, we have the speculative poetry. Poetry that depicts or illustrates themes of science fiction and mythology is referred to as speculative poetry. The term speculative defined in layman's word means unsure or something one is uncertain about. Hence, the speculative poems are inspired by something unknown. Speculative poetry is often known or referred to as science fiction poetry or fantasy poetry with a scientific touch. Speculative poetries are different from the other types of poetries as they are judged and defined based on its theme or subject in focus. So example, Christina Rossetti's Goblin Market is an interesting example of speculative poetry. This poem draws our attention to the themes of temptation and redemption. Goblin Market is a story of two sisters visiting a market selling goblin fruits. This market is owned by the goblins. I believe that ends my presentation on the topic, genres of literature. Thank you for watching. I hope you learned something. You can do further readings to better understand our topic. You can search for more examples of each genre of literature. Again, thank you for watching.